This video is based on an article from Eric Chesterton from MLB.com. You can find the article in the description below. Throughout the history of organized sports, there have been countless crazy moments, many of which we've covered on this channel before. In this video though, I'm going to tell you about the craziest story in sports ever. It's a bold claim, but by the time we're done here, I think you'll be sold. What's up everybody, I'm Chris Tagger, the average guy. Whatever you wanna call me, I don't care, just keep it nice. It's been a while since I've been here on the channel, but I'm here to fill in for Matt while he's recovering to tell you a story he just couldn't wait any longer to tell. This is the first episode of new series called Baseball Short Stories, where we tell stories about baseball that are short. And if you aren't tired of me by the end of this, you can head on over to twitch.tv forward slash I'm the average guy to check out some more content from me. I'm streaming basically daily. Now, the universe decided that it would create the circumstances for the most insane sports story ever in the year 1919. You might know this year for the Chicago Black Sox scandal Matt talked about in a recent video, the year the great Bambino was sold to the Yankees by Boston, or even the year Fernando Rodney was born. But you probably didn't remember it for the event we'll be talking about today. This is a baseball story, so we've gotta set our sights on Major League Baseball in 1919. The sport of the time was divided into two leagues, but without any divisions. The 1919 American League was led by the aforementioned White Sox, who are probably the first thing that comes to mind when talking about baseball that year. The focus of this video though, is on the American League runner-up, Cleveland Indians, and more specifically, on pitcher Ray Caldwell. The lefty Caldwell was on the tail end of his major league career. The former Yankee had spent his first nine seasons in the Bronx before taking a quick detour to Boston for the first half of the 1919 regular season. Ray Caldwell was a bit of a troublemaker. He often disappeared without notice, drank a little bit too much, and tested the patience of the Yankees' leadership for years. Boston's leash was even shorter, having enough of his antics only a few months after the begin pitching for them. Caldwell had a lot of talent, but as said by writer Grantland Rice in 1915, Caldwell could be as great as Maddie or Walter Johnson, but instead of choosing their careers, he is evidently going to be another Rube Waddell. Posing as the biggest threat to catch the White Sox in the American League pennant race, the Indians took a flyer on Caldwell, hoping he could be a key part in creating just the kind of spark the Cleveland Indians needed to catch the Sox. You'll realize soon that that was the best pun you'll hear for at least the next 10 years. On August 24th, the 63 and 46 Indians played the 28 and 79 Athletics. Caldwell was the starting pitcher for Cleveland, matching up against Philly's Raleigh Naylor. Keep in mind that this was Caldwell's first start as a member of the Indians. Two Cleveland runs in the fourth and a runoff Caldwell in the fifth was all the offense at a two to one pitcher's duel headed straight into the ninth. While the box score for this game on baseball reference states the start time weather as unknown, well, we know what the weather was like in the ninth inning. The circumstances for this event are just too insane to be believed. With eight and two thirds innings under his belt in the first start with the Indians, Caldwell only had Joe Dugan standing between him and a complete game victory. What happened next is something out of fiction. With only one out left to go, lightning struck. Literally, lightning struck the field and by the time it had come and gone, Caldwell was knocked unconscious on the pitcher's mound. A major league pitcher had just been struck by lightning with one out away from a complete game in his first start with his new team. Why don't you replay that last sentence just a few more times and let it really sink in. We don't know exactly where the bolt struck though, but it was close enough to Caldwell to leave him with a burn on his chest. Ray wasn't even the only one to get hit. As Chesterton wrote in this article, others on the field received electric shocks as well. The strike knocked off catcher Steve O'Neill's mask and cap. Third base coach Harry Davis lost his hat. 
Umpire Billy Evans said he felt the tingle of electricity in his legs. Ray Chapman, who would die after getting hit by a pitch just one year later, reported numbness in his legs that nearly caused him to fall when running to Caldwell from shortstop. After remaining unconscious for five minutes on the pitcher's mound, Caldwell did exactly the crazy thing you would expect him to do. He got back up and he got his next batter to ground out to finish his complete game. Ray Caldwell pitched really well with Cleveland the rest of the year, but nothing he did was more impressive than finishing off his complete game against the Athletics mere minutes after he was struck by lightning. It is the craziest story in sports ever and is one of the most shocking occurrences in human history. If you don't think so, comment below what you think is crazier. But that's all I got for episode one of Baseball Short Stories. I'm Chris Tagger, The Average Guy. Make sure to like this video if you haven't already. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Head on over to twitch.tv forward slash I'm The Average Guy. Drop me a follow, I'd appreciate it. But you guys have a good rest of your day. And as always, you take care. Find that shit.